Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Design Recharge. I'm super excited to have my friend Rob McClurkin on. Did I say your last name right? Yeah, you got oh, it right. Good. Okay. Um, I am, just want to remind everybody in the chat to make sure your two says all panelists and attendees. That way everybody can see if it just says to all panelists, it's just going to be to me and Rob. Uh, Matthew just joined us. I can't remember where you're from, but I know, I, I know you've come before and I'm glad to see you again. Remind me where you're popping in from. Uh, Dee's here from Peoria, Illinois as well. Oh yeah, I wanted to tell you about my shirt. Uh, Dee actually made my shirt and you can, nice. they are one of the sponsors for summer camp, which is coming up and you can buy your ticket now. The site's not completely finished, but you can buy your ticket. There's <laughs> ways to get in. It'll get through, it's really soft. And so it's stronger together, right? And I know not everybody, like uh, uh, Jose is from Seville, Spain, and we got some other people, but we're <clears throat> we're just gonna stick strong, be stronger together because our nation's uh, having a little bit of, of um, not a little bit, is in a little bit of turmoil. So but we we talked about this yesterday, me and Rob. We really wanted to make sure that um, people knew that we were also very concerned about what's going on and we are lifting it up in prayer absolutely and and doing whatever we can so if you know somebody who needs something and I can help please please let me know um, and it's very serious and we both even talked about not doing this but I told Rob I said it's really important to be consistent and today is eight years doing um, design recharge so like I think Amy's been to every single one. Thank you, Amy, except wow. when she goes on vacation. And then, then I let y'all know she's on vacation and she's okay with that. But it's eight years and I was really excited that Rob was gonna be here doing the eight year mark with me. That's awesome, okay. I'm excited. Now, it looks kind of like we're twins a little bit. We have to back up so we can show our shirts a little bit more. There we go. His shirt is super cool also. Invisible a creatures. Mummy. Yeah, it's invisible, it's invisible creatures. Oh, I but don't know awesome. what that is. It's a design firm in Seattle. No, oh. Oregon? Uh, Seattle? I don't <laughs> Seattle Crew says. Thank it's you. Seattle. Thank you. That's exactly right. Yeah, they're great. They're uh, it, really neat. I got to hear Don Clark, who's the uh, really the guy there, uh, speak a couple years ago. It was really neat. So, anyways. Okay. Well, today we're going to hear Rob speak. And if you don't know who Rob is, you're going to find out. He's one of the nicest people. He's definitely what I call a lifter or a bottom cheerleader. That means, I don't know if you know what that means, but to me, that means that you are lifting people up and you let them be the focus. And I know you've done this for other people and your name kept coming up. And then I got to meet you at Creative South and now we're friends, thankfully. And I bug you on Marco Polo and I randomly text you sometimes, right? Oh yeah, absolutely, it's awesome. <laughs> okay, all right, so Rob has a bunch of stuff to share and I think one of the things we talked about, we talked we could just rattle on forever because both him and I can, we can jibber jab, uh, as my husband would call it. But I want you to, you're gonna tell us a little bit about some humble pie, you're gonna talk about what stifled your creativity in some of your early jobs and maybe how you deal with that now, but it's kind of, I want to give them the idea uh, of who you are, where you came from. So you can either jump into your presentation or you can just tell us, you can do whatever you want to do. Okay. Um, well, who I am, I started out uh, in, in graphic design, you know, uh, like a lot of illustrators nowadays. It's uh, it was uh, my, my career, my where I went to school did not uh, have an illustration uh, program. Focus. So mm -hmm. yeah, focus. So basically, you know, I got out of school uh, looking for that first job, and had uh, an art director who looked at my portfolio and said, "Was looking looking through it," and she goes, "You ever thought about going to the Portfolio Center, which is actually here in Georgia?" You know, and I'm thinking, I just got out of school. You know what? What are you? What What are you doing to me? So. Uh, but she did look at my illustrations and really liked them. So she kind of put me on the track of a couple of agents. And I went and met with those agents who were really gracious to meet with me. And they basically were like, you got some work to do. You know, I mean, they, they weren't really willing to uh, put me under their wing. And I, and I, you know, now that I've 
uh, lived a few years. I get that. It makes a lot of, I totally get that. They, they don't have time to, you know, uh, cater to a young artist. So um, basically I ended up just kind of giving up on that for a while and just focused on getting my design career going, had a couple of jobs, moved around a lot. And uh, at that point, uh, I finally landed a job at an advertising agency, a small advertising agency. And that was sort of, I wanted that or design firm. I really, at the time, didn't want to work in an in-house agency. Uh, I was there for three months and it just wasn't working out. And I was um, let go. I, and that was a real blow to my ego, especially uh, coming out of school. I kind of thought, okay, all you old people move over. Let me show you how it's done. You know, I thought, I thought I had it all together. And so that was the first, that was the first kind of sobering moment in my life. I ended up leaving that. I mean, obviously I had to leave that job. And you were married at the time, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I got, yeah, I was married. Yeah. So, uh, I was married and, uh, so that was my first, that was my third job that I had like bounced around a lot because that's what you do. But not uh, moved around, uh, like, Dallas to California. Oh no, you were this is all Atlanta. taking this is all taking place in Atlanta. Exactly. Okay. So I ended up getting a job at what I uh, getting a job at what I thought would be my dream job. It was like this kind of small design firm did a lot of cool stuff, and I was so excited to get it. And um, I was there for ten months. And the first day, to kind of give you an idea of it, I got there when I was supposed to, and I didn't leave till eleven o'clock that night. That night, I get home, and my wife throws a book across, I mean, not at me. She throws a, across the, uh, hand, throws my book, book to me, and it says, what to expect when you're expecting. And I look at this book, and I'm like, what? And what to expect when you're, what is this? Well, what she was trying to tell me was, we were about to have a baby. We were going to have a baby in nine months. So I introduced, I was at that job, like I said, for 10 months. And um, things just weren't going real well there. Some jobs are just not a good fit. And I had two in a row that weren't a good fit for me. They were pretty easy to get along with. Like this was not, it was just growing pains. Or it wasn't the right fit, right? I would say it wasn't the right fit. Probably some growing pains. Probably a little bit of maturity uh, going on in there uh, as well. Um, And then maybe, uh, maybe it's just, sometimes you're just not right for the job. And um, I worked, I worked with them, like I said, for the 10 months and my daughter was born uh, nine months in. And then a few days after she was born, um, our, her father passed away. It was very sudden. And Wait, no, we, no. A few days after she, you sounded like you just died, but it was your wife. Oh, no, no. <clears throat> my wife, my father-in-law died. Did I sound like Sorry. You and said father, if a few days after she was born, her father died. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> I thought you were her father. Hey, Scott Soder's here. Okay, hey, keep Scott. going. Okay, so yeah, so my father-in-law passed away. And that was that was a huge blow. You know, it's like the best of times, the worst of times. And so when I got back to work, they kind of called me in and were basically, hey, we don't really think things are going very well over here. And so that was like, now I'm really down. I am, I am low, low. So I realized they kind of gave me some menial task. I felt like an intern at that point. So I realized, and they said, you know, really, if you mess up again, um, you're, we're, we're going to let you go. And when I say mess up, they had gotten me to the, so frazzled to a point that I knew I was going to mess up. I mean, I was so frazzled in that job back in, this goes back a ways, but we used to have these things called side quests and they were like these discs that nice. you would put in. And they had optical drives, which are a little more probably like DVD players, I guess. DVDs. But bigger. Yeah. I was trying to shove an optical, uh, uh, shove, shove a side quest into an optical and I ruined it. But that's how frazzled I was by them. They, they, there was a lot of, it, I don't want to get into it. Anyways, it was a lot. Of, it, was, it was just not a good environment for me. Anyways, so I was at the lowest and I thought, you know, I'm going to, they're going to fire me. I mean, because guess what? I'm going to screw up. Give me five minutes. I'll burn the place down. Probably. I mean, you know, who knows? So I, I went home that night 
uh, we had a new baby, told my wife, she was pretty distraught. I, and I, I got that. And I just, I was at my wits end and I'm a, I'm a Christian, you know, I, the only thing I knew to do was pray. And so the thing I did was I was like, Hey, I don't know if I've missed what I'm supposed to be doing. Maybe I am like, who knows? Well, we're going to count it, which would have been totally wrong for me. I mean, can you imagine me do you, I'm not good at math. So, um, anyways, so the next, so I said, you know, I really, Lord, I need you to put me on the mind of somebody who needs a graphic designer because I knew I was on my way out. I knew I was over. Um, the next day I went back to work. My wife calls me up in the middle of the day and said, uh, you got a phone call from this girl I went to college with and they're looking for a graphic designer and you came to mind. So I went on an interview, did not know at the time they had already filled the position, but apparently I knocked it out of the park because they made a position and uh, where I was going to have to, if I was to stay there, they had already, what I didn't share was they had already told me to stay there. I was going to be taking a pay cut. Um, now my pay was increased. So all of a sudden I, and I, and at that moment that started me out on a different trajectory and a different trajectory in my career. You know, I, I remember the very first day in that department, in that art department, just how much more relaxed it was and how shell shocked I felt still because I remember we all went to lunch together and then, and it was kind of a long lunch because it was a, Hey, welcome these new people that are here came back. And one of the artists was getting up and she was packing her stuff up and leaving. And I go, you're leaving. And she was like, yeah, I mean, I got here at this time to leave. And I was thinking, it's not 11 o'clock at night yet. You know, I mean, are you, you're going, you I were mean, still in that mode of, working yeah. super late. You didn't understand what the company culture was. Cause how old were you, you think at this time? Oh, I was 28, okay. 27 or 28. It was 28. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it was definitely culture shock for me, but like I said, at that point it was, it was where I could just kind of, um, I had eaten all that humble pie that God had been trying to show me all those years. Like you have a lot to learn. You don't know what you're talking about. And it was where it started that point of, of healing and building that confidence back up. And I started to realize I, I didn't miss a call. I didn't miss what I was supposed to do. And instead I kind of found what I was supposed to do because they gave me this children's magazine and said, we want you to art direct this. So I got to hire illustrators and I also got to draw some, put, do some of the illustrations in the magazine which was really cool because I got to try different things that I had never, you know, so I get to try different mediums. I got to do, you know, I did watercolor. I did marker. I did, um, and I started doing digital. I started doing, I did some Photoshop stuff and I did some Adobe illustrator. And back then I was really connected with Adobe illustrator because when we had to send our magazine out, we, we didn't have really F FTP was totally brand new and didn't work half the time. So file yeah. transfer protocol, mom. It's the way to send files across the internet or for all you young people who don't know what FTP is. Right. Right. I didn't even know what that meant. So anyways, you, uh, so we had all these little zip drives and it would take like 10 of those to get the magazine out. So I loved illustrator because the files were so small. I could even email them to a printer if I needed to. So I was kind of connect. So I really enjoyed enjoyed illustrator but for that reason i also you keep smiling what are you smiling at is somebody does oh, jeremy rivers said i thought it meant for the people ha <laughs> ha <laughs> i love you jeremy okay keep um, going no yeah um also during that time the web was brand new like email was exciting and i know i can't imagine you're actually able to email any files because they it was really small files it was like oh, yeah. wow that logo will fit on a it was like those little floppy, not a floppy yeah. disk, but it was like those little bitty, di and then you had Jazz, which was a thousand yeah. gigabytes oh, that was, or a thousand yeah. megabytes, and then a yeah. zip disk was a hundred, right? Right, right. So you know, we're getting like Mars. She's like, I remember zip drives. We were with our people here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So then also, you know, the internet was brand new. I wanted to kind of get to know the web. Where I was working, they were like, look, we're never going to do the web. The web's not. And I'm like, no, have you seen the web? It's disgusting. I mean, we, it needs a designer's touch. We need, so I kind of took it upon myself to, something fell. I took it on myself, on myself to try to learn 
how to do the internet, how to, how to build a website. And so in building a website, I thought, well, if I'm going to have a website, what's my website going to be about? So I decided to do an online comic strip. And I'd always had the dream of being a, a cartoonist, like in the paper. So that's what I started doing. And, and it, what was great about it is I was drawing more. I started writing and I did it for like five years. It, you would have thought it would have been a waste of time to do that because it was before social media. I mean, I had like, I would like spam people, my, my comic. I mean, I'm like internet spammer, like check out this comic. You'll love it. You know, <laughs> and like on a good day, it was like 38 people saw it, you know? So, uh, during that, so at that point, um, I ended up doing that. I was drawing more, but it was also causing me to write, which was behind my back. I didn't realize how good that was going to be because before I was a terrible writer. And at this point I was starting to try to pick up good grammar. <laughs> I was all those things that I was not very good in, in school. I was trying to go back and, and learn. And, um, I even caught a typo on my presentation today. That's what, so there might be some more though. Anyways. Okay. That's why we have each other, right? Right. right. Because we need to make sure that we're, cause we can't all be perfect. We, you know, like that's why we need other people. Right. So anyways, that's kind of brings me to where I am now. And, but, um, well, that's not totally true, but I got those two things really started shaping where I wanted to go. And there was a syndicated cartoonist. His name is Michael Jancy. He does a comic strip called The Norm. Some people may know him. He's an incredible artist. And he was really accessible through email and stuff. So I started emailing him and asking him questions. And he was very, very uh, mentoring to me. And during my process of getting to know him, he, he told me, he said, look, baseball, if comics, the funny papers, because it's a dying industry, the newspapers itself, if they were like baseball, if baseball, okay, if baseball were like comics, we would still be propping up Babe Ruth to bat because wow. we have all the, all these old comics, you know, a lot of the original creators passed away and we keep putting new people in there to do them instead of allowing room for new, uh, mm. new people to come in. And I, that's when I realized this is probably not for me. I mean, as much as I would love to do it, and I love the funny papers, I still do. Um, but maybe this is not really going to, there's nothing, I don't know what's going to happen with this kind of industry. I'm not going to be able to put, uh, to count on that, on me selling a strip to a syndicate and making a living off that. So that's where I started shifting and uh, ended up getting another job and kind of getting long winded in here, but basically I went to another job and from there I decided my next job would be freelance. And where was I going to go? Was I going to do design illustration or was I going to do a design and illustration? What was, and I had kind of a choice to make in there. But you didn't overlap. You weren't like today I'm going to go out on my own. You freelance for like three years and building up, right? You had the overlap, right. which I think right. is really important for sure. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, all right. So, so you started that, you started mm -hmm. freelancing, you said in 2005. Right. And well, or more significantly freelancing. Totally. Yeah. Cause I and left then, my current, I left my job in 2005 to go to work at this new company. And that's when I started making that decision. So 2005, yes. Something like that. And then, and then you overlapped for three years and you mm -hmm. went on your own in 2008. Right. Okay. And then you've been on your own. So how old was your daughter in 2008? I know you said math wasn't your Holly, I don't know. She was probably, let's see. She, do you want me to do the math? I have a calculator. 10 maybe. I don't know okay. how old she was. Um, well, that's okay. Anyways, that's it doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I know Scott's like, Diane grills you for dates. 11. Um, so he says 11. Okay. 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 Yeah, it, it was, listen, here, here's a story from that. It was, she was, she was young enough that we, she goes in to my, to where I'm working. And then we have this young lady working there and um, she comes and tells my mother-in-law, she goes, I met my daddy's girlfriend. Well, my mother-in-law was like, say what? And I'm like, what is she talking about? 
And so I'm like, no, 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 no. She works with me. She is my daddy's girlfriend. You know, what are you doing? <laughs> Let's get, we need to uh, have a conversation. Yeah. What does it mean to have a girlfriend? What is that? <laughs> like, let me let me explain that to you. That is hilarious. Oh my goodness. She could ruin your marriage. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> and you tell your your wife's mother, right? Right. Oh yeah. And, yeah. <clears throat> She's getting out her boxing gloves when you come. Oh, she was. Home. I mean, like I'm like, hold up. Hold <laughs> up. <laughs> okay, so um, because that kind of paints the picture. So it's and you have a son too, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's younger, so she's the oldest, and right? Yeah, they're like sixteen months apart. Okay, man, look at you pulling out the sixteen. I'd be like, let's just round it out to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, so, um, but but you and your wife put through they you put both or one kid's still in school right now. No, they both graduated. They're twenty twenty was twenty twenty was the year everybody graduated in my house. But so that means from 2008 on, you've put two kids through college mm -hmm. and you have a house mm -hmm. with electricity, right? Mm -hmm. These are mm -hmm. like, you're not um, living off hamsters. the street. <laughs> right. they have, they, they're like, they're yeah. generating. I, I got a guinea pig just for the <laughs> office. Oh, okay. Shoo. <laughs> he must be very big. <laughs> yeah, <he is. laughs> but like, you know, those are... Um, it's important for us to know that you can make it. And I know that there was um, a time when it didn't look like it was going so great. Do you right. want to tell them about that? And then we'll jump into your presentation so you can, they can see your oh, work. Oh yeah. Are you talking about the 2008? Yeah. Was when, that 2008 when you, you had been doing business and for three right, yeah, years? I'd been, yeah. yeah. I'd been doing, doing business for a while. 2008 hit and you know, the economy really 2008 actually did not affect me. It was 2009 and moving forward that really started, I started having these effects. And one of the things was my mom became ill. So that was sort of this, it was a perfect storm brewing and I couldn't see it. So the, the economy was going bad and I was like, okay, well, I've been marketing myself in all these different ways. How can I save, how can I save money? And so I kind of figured I started pulling back on my marketing. I've really pulled back way more than I should have. And that was a, that was a huge mistake. So there was that. Then my mom got sick. And so we were dealing with, with her being sick. Cause basically the day I went out on my, actually 2008, the day I was out on my own was the first day that I had to start driving. I started driving her to get dialysis. And so, you know, here I am trying to, now this is my full-time job working for myself and I'm doing, I'm, I'm running, doing this as well. Then as 2008 became worse, I pulled back on my marketing and then 2009 and I ended up getting it, taking a client on that was overall, um, it's kind of one of those where it sounds like a great project for you, but maybe not every project is right for you. And this was one of those, those deals. And it was a kind of a two year thing and it ended up really pulling me away from being able to spread out and keep several irons in the fire. So I, so I kind of created the storm myself in some, maybe some bad decisions. Um, and then also kinda just like putting all your eggs in one basket, kind of like no, you were, I was no longer diversified. Yeah. Okay. So I do think that is important to say. And so this is again, why we are learning from Rob. He's lucky enough, or he's lucky enough. He's lucky enough to have gone through it. So we don't have to, it's kind of like your, you know, brother from another mother, right? Hmm. Right. So I put all, all those irons kind of in that fire. And um, interestingly enough, I'd had two jobs. It was that one and another job came along that was really going to be a good job to have. And I ended up turning this one down to go with this one. And then this one ended up just being kind of a real time suck and just draining me. So then as I'm dealing with it, my mom's continuing health over the years is declining. I'm finding that I am kind of withdrawing really from any motivation to, to work. And I actually found myself getting caught up in just playing games on my iPhone, which is absolutely terrible. But that's how I kind of, that's kind of how I coped mm -hmm. was I just could break away from reality. And so I saw year after year, the numbers just go drop, drop, drop. 
till the third, around the third year, I was with my accountant looking at what I had done for the year. And when I saw that number, I was like, if I don't, this is it. Like, I've got to pull myself out of this nosedive or I'm done. I'm closing up shop. It's over. And um, so I, I really tried to change my mentality. Uh, my mom during that time had passed away, which really was terrible. And that also sent me on a little bit of a, I'm not really somebody that gets depressed, but during that, it was about six months that I didn't know what was going on. Like I was really out of it. And even my family was like, you're, you're grumpy. You're, you know, you're all these things I'm usually not. So, uh, but I started realizing I had to pull myself out of that nosedive. It kind of started making a comeback, but even then that comeback wasn't smooth. There was still several years. I'm like, maybe I, I sent my resume out to places. I'm still, things are kind of better, but are they really going well? So it was a, it was a slow climb. Like you were going to go back to a job job? Oh, yeah. I would have done, I, I love freelance. I would have kept doing it. But it was going to have to be something that would bridge, bridge the, the, the gap. Okay, so I want you to explain what you were doing marketing-wise before and then when you started pulling back. So just to kind of paint the picture, because, you know, granted, what we did yesterday isn't what we're going to be doing today, but it gives a picture and idea. And I think that sometimes we're like, Oh, this used to work. Yeah. It used to work. Now it doesn't work today, but it's good to know. Cause I think sometimes some things still work, right? Absolutely. Um, one of the big things I did early on was source books like workbook and the directory of illustration. So let's There's explain it to the young people. There were okay. these books that would um, that we would look at or we would see people would get them in the offices and you would just see, it was just pages and pages of all this awesome art and people would pay to be inside this book or you would have your agent would pay to be inside the book, right? right? And then you right. would have certain number of space. You would have maybe multiple pages. You would have a quarter page. You would have a half page or a full page, right? They, they broke it up to something like this. But it would be where an art director would go. It's still, not that the internet wasn't around. It just wasn't as meaty as it is now. And this is definitely something people don't do anymore. But these workbooks or these, right? They don't. Yeah, they, they do still exist. Uh, what somebody oh. just said here, a workbook still comes out. They still have them. I don't know if they're as effective. They're not, I don't believe they're as effective as they used to be. They, now, I could be corrected on that. The, but my experience has been they're not as effective as they used to be. And they're very, they're very expensive to be in. Mm -hmm. Like $3,000 or something. Yeah. Like that. So that was one of the things I was doing, was putting myself. And at first, they were working. They were, they were very effective. And then there's also websites that I would be on. There's like Folio Planet, which is owned mm -hmm. by Workbook. You can still, you, and by the way, the, the dot coms for these websites, like Directory of Illustration and Workbook, are probably very still, still valid. I mean, like uh, one of my biggest jobs came from workbook.com. But that was several years ago. There's childrensillustrator.com. There's the iSpot. There's, and there used to be more. Uh, there's Hire an Illustrator. So there's different websites. But these are, are paid. These are all paid okay. websites. Some of them, like with, with workbook and directory, you'll get a discount or they kind of say we throw the website in if you're buying into the book, that kind of oh, stuff right. is incentive. So that's, the, that's one of the main things I was doing. I, at the time, I'd also invested in a mailing list through AdBase where you can basically get, you know, you can type in, Publishers and it's going to come up with all these publishers email addresses, whatever So you kind of get an address and a name where to send your postcards, which I I highly I think is the most effective and then uh, Also do email blasts So I was okay, doing so, I was doing all that All right. So Lorenzo he's I think he's in uh, Northern Alabama or he's in Atlanta. I can't remember. I'm sorry. He's in the south Would you recommend to use any of these workbook directories now? What are you using them now? That's what I am, I'm going to ask. Am, I am not using them. I sometimes I'm tempted to like, what if I did, what if I tried it out again to see what would happen? But generally I've, I've told um, directory of illustration many, many times and they may have, a, they may offer this now. I don't know, but I've said, if you guys will open it up to where I can only be on your website and I can pay a minimal amount of money to be on your website, I'll join up, but I don't want to be in the book anymore. 
because I'm not, when I, honestly, when I look at those books, I don't think they fit what I do anymore. I think those are actually directed toward design agencies and advertising agencies, more commercial type art. And what I'm doing is focusing directly into children's illustration. Oh, Lorenzo says they only have website only. They now have website only option. Well, if, and he's in if, Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah. If, yeah. Um, then, I mean, you might want to give it a shot. I, I, you could always give it a shot and see if it works for you. My, my uh, experience has been that unless you're on the front page, it really doesn't help a ton. And I have never, I hate this. I don't want to, I'm, I hadn't had a lot of success with those websites. Okay. So now I want you to show some of your work because they could be like, nah, well, maybe he's not that good, but Lord knows you're really good. And you've had some other bigger clients, right? Like recently you finished something. Yeah. So you want me to show my website? I, no, I will. No, I want you to show you that deck. That presentation. Okay. Yeah, I, I can do that. And he's awesome with typography. Just, Oh no, I'm just kidding. We already <laughs> joked about this. <laughs> I did this on purpose just to annoy people. Um, but it might work because it's my first ever professionally published illustration. Um, so yeah, this is just to annoy you. I hope you're annoyed anyways. Uh, so how could I possibly be an illustrator? This is the very first illustration I ever did yeah. that I was, that I was paid to do my, one of my best friends from high school who we were both best men in each other's weddings still hang out to this day. He ended up working for Marvel for a while in New York and Marvel at the time had a Marvel family publishing unit that did magazines. And one of the magazines was Barbie magazine. And he said, Hey, I want you to illustrate a little kind of puzzle page for the inside front cover. Now this does go back in time a little bit because this is probably 96 or 97 that I did this. So there's, this was a huge gap before I started illustrating for that kid's magazine that I, that I was also the art director for. So this is my very first one. Joseph said it should have been in comic sans. <laughs> So this is it. And I absolutely, this is me and me and him, me and my friend, Josh, we still joke about, we joke about this illustration. <laughs> it still looks pretty good to me, but I'm not an illustrator, but I can see what you mean, right? Yeah. Where you were then and where you are now is totally different. Right. So anyways, this is a, it's a good, it's a good reminder of, of what Paula you says you're brave. Yeah. You know, Hey, look, it is what it is, you know, but I got paid for it and it was really cool. The check had a little uh, watermark of Spider-Man, which was so cool. And uh, like I said, my first, I really, believe it or not, I labored over this. I like, this was, the, <laughs> this was a hard illustration to do. I think I redrew it several times. I knew I wasn't really happy with it, but this was my first attempt and I was overthinking it. Um, probably needed to be. Anyways, there it is. So that was my very first one. So at this point, you need to look at your work and you need to evaluate. Okay, so that's what I started doing over this, this big gap of time from probably 96 to 2008. I'm kind of looking at my work. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm looking at other artists' work. I'm seeing what's, what's um, what, what I like, but also what's good about what they're doing. So I, so, I do this. This is from the kids magazine that I did. They had me come up with a character. His name was Robbie. And so he appeared in the magazine, every issue. But here's the problem. I was terrible at this. I, he, Robbie is not consistent. If you look at him, there's no consistency. I never could get him how I wanted. I'm still kind of picking this up and this is all Adobe Illustrator. And it's really nice to see your work in print because you start to see where you need darkened lines where, where things are getting lost, where there's not enough contrast, mm. all that kind the of stuff. The dog's pretty consistent. The dog was the only thing that was pretty consistent. I really liked the dog. And I think this is where I started realizing I really do really well with animals. I mm. really, I really love animals. So, you know, this is kind of this whole, whole thing. So I'm better than I was, but I still had a lot of growth. So let's see what this slide is. So be constructively cl critical. And if possible, get a critique from other artists or art directors. And when I say constructively critical, don't look at your, I got a capital letter right in the middle of that. Anyways, whatever. 
be conservatively critical. Don't look at your work and go, well, I stink. And that's really hard to do. Mm. I do. I, I still catch myself doing that. And there are times when I do allow myself a pity party to go, man, what am I doing? And, and there's plenty of unbelievable illustrators. I see their work and go on, how in the world am I still doing this? They're so mm. good. But there's always stuff that if you quit, so which leads me to this one, find inspiration in other artists work, but be careful. Don't compare yourself to others. So I did get caught up in that. Well, that didn't do anything but defeat me. That doesn't do, mm. it doesn't do you any good. So you find yourself even more paralyzed. You, instead of seeing what they're doing and, and getting inspiration from it, I, I was getting paralyzed by just looking at amazing work. So just one day I quit thinking that way. I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done comparing myself. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just going to enjoy their work. I'm going to celebrate with them because the other kind of leads to jealousy. And I don't want to be jealous of my uh, peers. I want to do celebrate with them. All right. So, so Paula asked a question. Yeah. She said, exactly. How to not do that? The last one, how to not. And I think it's about, or well, you answer and then I'll tell you what I think. I'd love to hear what you say. <laughs> well, my dad, if he's listening, sometimes he watches with my mom, but not often. Um, usually, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but he would say you just have to compare yourself to who you were yesterday. I think Abraham Lincoln mm -hmm. said it, but my dad likes to say it too. But I think that's better that you can see where there's growth happen. Maybe go back to, you know, Facebook's kind of nice. It'll say, this is where you were three years ago. And I'm like, thank goodness, Facebook. <laughs> now I, I definitely am not going to share this out. But it's good to know I can see that I've improved, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, that's one thing I try to do every year is reevaluate my work mm. to look at what I've done, where I've come from and where I am to this point and what I want to work on for the next year. I try to do that every year. And just, it doesn't take a long like time. Like when? To do December? I do it usually in late December, early January. Mm. And just where is it that I want to go? Kind of set up the points of, what do I want to work on this year? And sometimes it's not art at all. Sometimes it is art. Like sometimes it's my writing. Sometimes it's, mm. but, but like the past couple of years have been more like I'm focused on, here's the things I want to try to learn through what I'm doing illustratively. So I think that's the best way to do it. And also you just got to, I mean, you just got to train your brain. I mean, it's kind of mm. like just when you find yourself thinking like that, quit thinking like that. And if you need mm. to like, unfollow somebody that's amazing for a while. I guess it's okay. I mean, do that, if, if, you know, or if you need to uh, just stay off of social media for a little bit and work on your own craft, do that, whatever it takes, but you just got to stop because it's only going to, it's not, not going to help you. It doesn't lift you up at all. It doesn't sure. lift you up at all. So from that, from those earlier illustrations, I really liked this illustration for a really long time. I thought it was fantastic. And I like that there's not all white people. Good job. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I do too. And it's a, it was a fun uh, project to work on. I was kind of getting a little bit better of a command of Illustrator, trying to think about color a little better and how you have um, the... I had somebody tell me that... Uh, well, I'll get to that in a minute. So I was really trying to play around with my whole uh, portfolio as far as just pushing it with characters and, and making scenes and all that kind of stuff. And then just honestly getting better with Illustrator. And I felt like I kind of got started getting a little bit better command of it. I started sometimes using lines in my artwork where I felt like it was necessary because at first I just wanted to use solid shapes, but then I kind of started incorporating some lines this is actually over here was an ad that went in like the directory of illustration. Mm -hmm. So this was like a tear sheet. So it was kind of showing everything that I could do. And I like, this is little, the same little character in the dog, but I felt like he was getting a little more, I was getting a little better kind of dialing it in a little bit more here and also just having fun with characters and all, all that. So like when was that? But, when did I do that? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not really, I can't really say for sure, but I was definitely full-time illustration by this point. Don't be afraid to try something new and, and put it out there. So at this point, 
you know, I was really wanting to push Adobe Illustrator more. I wanted well, some of my favorite artists were a lot of the artists that did the Pixar concept work, like Lou Romano. Mm -hmm. I really, I was also a big fan of, you know, old Disney artists like Mary Blair and JP Miller. And I love golden books and all the texture they have in there. And so I was trying to emulate that. So I started taking vector art mm. and putting, putting texture with it. So this was, and actually this Santa Claus piece was a really a breakout piece for me. I used it as a promo, an uh, email it. promo. It got me some work from American greetings. So <clears throat> it was a, it was a good move. And I found that the texture was, I think was a part of a selling point. I think they liked that look. And so I, I kept doing it with more and more. And here's another illustration. I did this on the cover of a little magazine. We're loving the texture. Jose's like, these are very nice. He did on all caps. And Paula said, oh, they are excellent. Lorenzo says, they, were these email or mailers? Who I like the, uh, this was an, on the next one. This was an email blast. Okay. And this was just a little, this was actually a printed piece in a little magazine out of the UK called, it was called Puzzler Magazine. And I worked for them for a while where they would have these little inset pieces of art. So, oh, cool. and I used, ended up using this as a promo piece and mailing it out. It was a, it was a also a pretty successful little piece for me. Amy says, this was the birth of your style, she says. I think, yeah, I agree. I would agree. And Matthew says, he's from Western Massachusetts. He said, um, it's so nice to see how your work has evolved. Thank you. Yeah. Was, when I was putting this together, I was like, wow, this is really fun to look at and see the differences. Mm -hmm. So this piece actually I created, I went to SCBWI, which is a society of children's book writers and illustrators. They had an illustrator day. So I wanted to get into children's publishing and I couldn't figure out how I wasn't what I was doing wrong. Mm -hmm. So I would, they had this illustrators day. And in it, they had a critique and they also had an illustrator mentorship of which I signed up for and did this mentorship with, with an artist here in Georgia. And um, there was a prompt and the prompt was launch. So I created this piece from that. Hmm. I go to the, I go to the conference where we're talking and, and at that point, like they would have these critiques like in front of everybody and they would like go to your portfolio and thumb through it and they would say in front of everybody what they thought and, which I really, was this the regional or the national one? This was regional. This was regional. Okay. So it was in Nashville? No, this was in Georgia. Atlanta? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this piece, like I said, the, the prompt was launched and they ended up putting all of us people that had had the illustrator mentorship together. And I was the only one that did anything that didn't have anything to do with a rocket or a flight. Ah. And one of the art directors was from Candlewick and she was like, she kind of pointed that out and in looking at my portfolio, she said, if I had a job, I'd give it to you right now, which was really amazing because the year before I had gone, they had looked in my portfolio and everybody was like, you know, I could see this in animation. Have you ever thought about animating this? And mm. that was frustrating to me because I was trying to get into publishing into picture books. I, I didn't want to necessarily do animation. I have nothing against animation, but I'm not an animator. So at this point, at that point, the year before I had just pulled aside the illustrator, um, what I forget what they call them, the um, illustrator coordinator. And she had a lot of books published and I went up to her and I said, look, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Like I'm trying, I said, I'm actually making a living as an illustrator, but I can't get into picture books. What am I doing wrong? So she said, okay, I took a deep breath and said, your artwork is flat. And I go, I don't understand what you mean because I have shading in here. I've got gradients and stuff. And she goes, your colors, you, you, she goes, colors, cool colors, push back Warm colors, bring forward. Everything's kind of got the same values. You're not doing any, you know, there's nothing that's drawing people, your, your eye. And she goes, and you don't have any interactivity going on. Characters need to interact. Mm. So, so this was the second year. And when I, wow, that, that was really insightful. That was really good. It was fantastic. It was the best that I'd ever gotten. And it was honest. And I really appreciated mm. what I wanted. I mean, mm -hmm. I, you know, and I think sometimes when we critique, we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. But I, I, I didn't care if you hurt my feelings. I wanted, I had a goal. To get better. You know, I had a goal yeah. to get better. 
So this was the second year. This was after me taking that advice. And to have that art director say that. Now, she never did give me a job, which is okay. But it was the encouragement that I needed to know I'm on the right track. Mm -hmm. So I really, th this piece has a, you know, holds a special place for me. Mm -hmm. And as you see, the, the bus is heading to Nashville. That's kind of. I see. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, and you also notice just a little aside, here's three fingers. And mm. as children artists, a lot of us like to draw three fingers, but when you get into publishing, they prefer five. They want you to have five really? fingers. Yeah. They prefer that. Huh. It's part of, it's part of the whole, there's a whole thing about trade work. I'm mean, kind of getting to do a deep dive here, but there's trade and there's commercial. And I would say commercial, like think about your cereal box. That's more of a commercial mm -hmm. polished look. And then when you get into picture books, it's more considered trade kind of, I maybe high end art. They want it look, you know, people need to have four fingers, but with animals, you can get away with it. But with people it needs five fingers, I mean, not four, but five fingers. So anyways, so when That's you get good. your, yeah. Good for X. Lorenzo is also, he's like, thanks for explaining that. Yeah, you're welcome. Hopefully that was helpful. I'm still trying to learn it to be honest because it seems to be a moving target sometimes. But um, so here's when you get your first picture book deal, it's always good to throw out your process and create a new one, which is what For I did. For real? With, no. That's oh. being <laughs> sarcastic because that's what I did with my first picture book on nuts. And I'm sorry for the quality. This is the best quality I could find of this cover, but that's what I did with on nuts. I just said, I do not want to do any vector with this. I had never worked solely in Photoshop as an art tool before. Wow. But, but I wanted the squirrel to, to be more gangly, gangly arms. I didn't want everything to be um, so refined as it can be, as I would work in Illustrator. I really didn't feel like Illustrator captured my personality as my later work has. And this is one of those situations where I just wanted to try something brand new. And so this is the cover of it. And this is like an interior shot that actually ended up changing a little bit. Um, but Anyways, that's kind of how that sort of ended up looking. I was going from kind of polished illustrator to just whimsy is what I was going for. So, so wait, just, uh, Paul has a question. He said, yeah. how do you think we can encourage more of this useful kind of critique in the industry? I mean, I think it has to do with you asking for it. I think that you have to say, I actually, and I don't think you can do it in a big group. I think you need to do it with trusted people and say, I'm really needing, I want to improve. I really, really need to improve. And I trust that you're going to tell me the truth. Could you please tell me why I'm not getting this kind of work or right, I don't, what I can improve? Do you think yeah. it had to do with your attitude or do you think it was something else? I think it had to do with my attitude. I, I think that most people don't want to give a soul crushing critique. Mm-hmm. But when I, when she saw that I was coming to her, cause they were still doing critiques of other people. And I just walked up to her and I, maybe she could sense a little bit of my frustration. I had just been actually had been told I had a really, I mean, it was an okay critique. I mean, who wouldn't like to hear their stuff could be animated, but she knew what I was going for. And I said, I don't get it. I'm professionally working. I'm making a living, but I'm not getting into this. I, I can't make it into this part of it. I don't, what's wrong. I think that was all it took. Just, I want an honest critique. Mm -hmm. so, I, so you were vulnerable also, I think. Yeah. So Paul, we just have to, we have to build those relationships, I think. And I think uh, Paul also, what I have found, there's always sometimes people when they're asking for a critique, what they immediately do is turn around and argue with you. Mm -hmm. They they're so in this, I'm supposed to defend my artwork that they forget to close their mouth and just listen to what somebody is saying. And, you know, and, and if I've had a critique like that, I know I have it before and I just stop and I just let them finish talking. And I'm like, okay, cause it, cause they clearly, all they wanted to do is defend it. And I'm trying to help them. That's all I'm trying to do. Well, I always think about when we start a uh, power station, which is my mastermind group, we always start it with, um, what kind of feedback there is. And there's like, I think maybe six different types. And I, I think it's fine. You can ask for celebration. You can ask for um, critical feedback. You can ask for um, like 
connections or a, a tip or something, but really it's, do you want people to celebrate or do you really want someone to give you the feedback to make it better? And I think you have to ask that question and, and then they have to answer it because if they answer it saying, you know what? I just really want to sell. And I mean, I'm, I, sometimes I just want a celebration. I just, yeah. Hey, I got it finished. People, let's just be happy. It's done. I really need a celebration. But like, there are sometimes I'm like, I want this to be better. I don't, I can't see what's wrong with it. Can you please help me? Right. 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 Absolutely. Okay. Keep so, going. I'm sorry. That, no, that's great. So it brings me to the next slide, which is <clears throat> don't confuse your career with value. A thin rendering of an uninspired story. So that was the critique. That was the review I got from a major publishing uh, reviewer, uh, Kirkus Reviews Books. They, that's what they said about On Nuts, a thin rendering of an uninspired story. Wow. That destroyed me. Yeah, I hate to admit it. I hate to admit it, but it destroyed me. It, it was like, how can you, this is, I just started. I mean, why would you say, have you, did you read the book? The book is not, it's, it's a, a book about a, a squirrel who is chasing an acorn and he captures that acorn. This is not, uh, you know, Shakespeare, or this does not have some deep philosophical meaning. It's a fun book. It's when I write books, I write them for those times when it's bedtime. Your kids have had a bath. You just they curl up under your arms and you read a book together and you laugh. And it's just that mm -hmm. bond, that moment. That's what I write for. I don't write to, I write to entertain mm -hmm. and, and to maybe bring a smile and, and laughter because there's nothing better than a kid's laugh. And that's what I'm, that's what I write for. So it really, it just devastated me. And I thought, boy, my career is over before it even started. And it, and I let it, unfortunately, I really let it take the joy out of um, uh, marketing the book like I should have. It's still the, my favorite book I've ever done. It is actually a wonderful story. It's an unbelievable read aloud. If you go to schools and read this book, it's a winner every time. I still get emails from parents or teachers mm -hmm. about this book. So that, and that's the best part. So if you ever get a bad review, just go do school visits. And right then, mm. that will heal your heart because you realize why you do this. Well, maybe that's even better to start there than to value what the, um, maybe sometimes, because you never know if they were in a bad mood or something. I had somebody, oh. I entered, entered our little thing into an SCBWI and the lady's like, well, clearly you didn't read the directions. You did not include your bio and whatever. I'm like, lady, I made the... PDF insertable. I concluded the bio. I don't know what, you know, I'm like, wait, wait, I did it right. Like I am a rule follower. Like I fixed the PDF. Right. Right. But it's like somebody made a judgment and you never know where they are, but right. really the people who mattered are those kids. Right. And they are the better judge if it was a good book. Absolutely. Absolutely. So after that, I got, I finally, was able to pick myself back up because I'm not going to let that defeat me. And I decided to write Playdates Rule, which is my second I love one. this one. And what did you make it in? It's totally Photoshop. Oh. So, what, and, and here I felt like I was much, my artwork was much better. There was much more, uh, my characters, my, everything about it was much more refined and stylized and, and just better than what I had originally done with On Nut. So illustratively, I thought it was just a better story. And so I was super excited about that. Jeremy Wait. Slagle is typing just to all panelists, but he says, my favorite, love the characters. And Cole says, I have an autographed copy. <laughs> well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Um, I even so, like the type, the, how the, the color is on that type. I think yeah, that's that, one of the things. It's all the little details that are in there that are subtle. And that's one of the things I think is one of your superpowers is these, you don't have to be so out bam, it's like the texture, it's soft. I mean, I want to be friends with that elephant. Well, and, and that's the fun thing about this book that I like is that I got to hand do the type and the title and all that kind of stuff. And so it's really what's cool about publishing is if you sell a book or even if you self-publish, you are, it's your own project and you mm. get to do with it. And publishers are usually really, really cool 
they let you, if you want to try something, they'll let you try it. If they don't think it's working, they'll tell you, but if they like it, they'll, they'll let you do it. So I really like that. I got to play around with the type on this instead of having some mm -hmm. font that we use. So do you um, do the whole insides? Uh, I don't, I don't typeset. They typeset, but mm -hmm. we kind of work out in all the sketches where the type's going to be. So once I do everything, and sometimes they end up surprising me and do some fun stuff, you know, typography, typographically that I wasn't expecting, which even makes papyrus. it more fun. They always use papyrus. I, I, oh, yeah. I suggest that every time. They shoot me down. <laughs> they don't let me near the book anymore. <laughs> I don't know why. So, but what's cool about children's books is that they always say to market one book, write another one. Mm. But it also helps the more you do, the more opportunities you get to do other picture books. So, which brings me to another book that I got to do, which I didn't write, but it was called Tough Tug. I don't have Ooh. the cover, here, but what was, I really loved this book because working with the publisher, uh, the art director and stuff, they really pushed me. It was the first time I'd ha ever had an art director's like really like, like they made a lot of suggestions and they were like, go watch The Perfect Storm. So I pulled mm. up, and I, I had seen the movie, but they were, but they were like, I was like, watching those big waves and I would pause mm -hmm. it and I would start sketching stuff because water's hard to do and yeah. just watching and the, and the colors they have in that movie and all that. Mm. So I really dove into that. And then they made some other suggestions along the way. And this was probably this book was where I kind of realized it's not cheating to use some filters like multiply mm. and hue and saturation start. I mean, I, I remember have a good buddy named Keith Frawley and Keith was like, man, I mean, I would just use hue and saturation. And I go, oh, it seems like cheating, isn't it? And he was like, I never thought about it that way. So he starts doing what I'm doing and I started using hue and saturation. So, so, uh, but it was a great suggestion and it really, I think really helped and pushed. And this piece is so dramatic and I really loved it, but it was also where they encouraged me like, and this is probably not a great, I should have showed you a different picture, but, where they really wanted the, the tugboats to be characters and, and like the water mm -hmm. was a character and they really like, let's make that tugboat animated and how he twists and turns. And he's not just this little stiff boat in every picture. So this was a, a great challenge and it's probably one of my favorite books specifically because of the way they pushed me. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think I leveled up here. But that's because you have a teachable spirit. And you wanted to get better and better. I love this. This, I haven't never seen this. So I'm sorry. I haven't seen it, but I don't have kids, but I think I might get this book. Cool. Yeah. It's awesome. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I really like this. So this was a really fun illustration, really, really fun project. Whoops. Okay. So let's see what I got next. Okay. So this, uh, and I'm showing this for a reason. This is an old piece that I did. This was illustrator and Photoshop and I really never was happy with it. Mm. So so I kept going back to it. I never could get it right. And there's a, um, there's, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of it. I know some guys here have illustration department, uh, Giuseppe Castellano. He has like classes for illustrators. His background is children's art, children's publishing. And uh, so you can take classes with him and he will go with you and help you critique stuff and you know, critique stuff. And here's what I'm working on. And what's really cool. He's very accessible. So I started. What's his name again? Um, uh, Mara wants to know. Giuseppe Castellano. It's if you look up the illustration department and he has like classes, he'll do, he'll do paid for critiques. And it's, there's a couple of guys in here that I know have done that. It's How do you well spell Giuseppe? It. Oh, don't ask is me. it a J or a G? G? Oh, thank you. Oh, G. Oh, look, Scott Soder's already got it in. Thank you, you buddy. It. And then uh, uh, Taylor, thank you. I'll be yeah, Taylor, sending you your Josh, paycheck. All these dudes. Uh, you know, all these dudes, I mean, all these people, <laughs> all these folks, they, they all um, have done it and, and it's well worth it. You, you grow from it. But anyways, um, mm. what's awesome about it is if you do a portfolio critique, which I highly recommend for anybody in here, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to cost about a hundred dollars, just enough to hurt a little bit, but he will spend an hour or more with you. He already knows your work by the time you meet with him and he will go through it and you will be the better for it. It's well worth the paid critique. I would recommend anybody do it. Oh, so Paula has a question. So mm -hmm. I think that's actually, that's not a bad uh, at all. That's a great price to be yeah, honest, I, I think. I, so, I so Paula asks, I like the background on this. 
also I do too. Is it the character handling that was the struggle? What was it? Why were you not happy with this? That's a good question. I really like the little girl right here, but I, uh -huh. I don't think it was, I think it was the bear maybe was a problem. It just wasn't working for me. And which brings me to this. I, let me get to the next page real quick because okay. Sorry. me working with Giuseppe and my style growing, because I did this a few years earlier, but I wanted to come back to it. Like what is, year? Oh, <gasps> whoa, that's a difference. So what same, year, what year, how many years is in between this? Four or five. Wow. Wow. Okay. Joseph says he knew it. He knew it was coming. <laughs> so yeah. So me and so what was nice about this was I wanted to revisit this because I always liked the idea of it. The whole idea of this was, mm. um, a picture book idea I had for someone's been sleeping in my tent, which my mm. agent thought was a terrible name. You know, I don't, I don't know why that would be bad. <laughs> so I thought it was really great. <laughs> but anyways, so this, so this was kind of me wanting to revisit that whole idea. And, mm. um, and so just, I kind of sketched it out and I started working on it. And because it, I had had a critique with Giuseppe, I just hit him up one day and said, I'm struggling with this. What do you think? literally minutes later marked this bad boy up sent it back to me and out came this and i was able to and then eventually i resent it to him and he's like what do you think and i go i love it and he goes and that's great so I ended up so using it where was this with the tugboat people this was actually pre-tugboat i believe huh? that's a good question i don't know i, I think this was pre-tugboat but it has some of the same like color. You're you're using color in a new way here than mm -hmm. you were, like you did in the tugboat. It oh, Tom is. Cox. Hey, Tom Cox is here. He says hey, it was yeah. pre tugboat. Okay. Oh, so, look! All your friends are like pre tug. Josh Lewis, <laughs> Scott Soder. <laughs> okay, keep going. So yeah, so that that just shows you the difference between the two, and that's kind of what I, it was. It's fun to see, and I actually I recommend that. Like, take an illustration you did five years ago, redo it and see what, what changes mm -hmm. and how you would, like, I look at stuff that I've done, like in, in um, my All Nuts book, there's one page full of acorns. Mm -hmm. And the other day I was actually just mowing the lawn. And I think a lot when I mow the lawn and I was thinking, ah, oh, why didn't they use a bunch of different shades of brown and maybe even some different colors within those acorns instead of just brown the whole way through, how much mm -hmm. more interesting that would have been. So mm -hmm. I may go back and redo that page one day just for fun. I like that idea. I like that you're continuing to challenge yourself, but to me, it's like your storytelling has gotten richer. Like I, I would want to stay on that page longer. You I do try I mean? to think about story in every illustration I do. Like what is the story going on in this page? Well, even if it, there's no story attached to it, I do try to think that way. But that brings I, me, you know, go ahead. I just like the, also just the color of the, the, I love the turtle coming out, but I also like the color of that log. It's so unexpected. I right. just think it's fantastic. I had an art director <clears throat> tell me on um, Playdate's Rule, I actually showed her some spreads from it. And there was kind of this yellowish color in the background. And she goes, you know what, if I'd had that book, I would have just gone into the hue and saturation and I'd have bumped that up and made that background sort of a lime green, totally unexpected. It would have been delicious. And so I try to keep that in mind when I do stuff now, like unexpected pops of color. That would be hmm. interesting to people. Surprises. Yeah. So I started that whole presentation with that Marvel family publishing working years ago in 1998 to, I just wrapped up and it comes out in June. July this month. Comes, out, comes out in July, next, oh, this yes. just coming July. So next month, uh, this book. So working mm. with going full circle, getting to work with Marvel again and be where the flurkin, which is based off the captain Marvel movie. And it kind of rhymes with McClurkin. It does. <laughs> Actually, I almost told him, why don't we just put my name as McFlurkin? But then I thought that might hurt me as trying to get future work. So I decided not to. I love this. I, I think this is, um, I love that you were able to do something that, <clears throat> and you work pretty fast because I remember us talking about this and you were working on this project. Um, but all your 
Josh, Lewis, Cole, Scott, they're all like, mic drop, right? Because this was so, it's really nice to see that somebody sees something in you that you really value, you know, but you really have grown. Thank you. And I think I sometimes we stand in our own way for being stifling curi- or our creativity. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. No, uh, you didn't interrupt. I'm listening to you. Go ahead. No, my husband just brought me another drink. Oh. Through the magic curtain. Keep no, going. I mean, I, no, I, I, thank you. I appreciate it. I, this was a, uh, definitely a fun project. I think cats are really hard to draw. And uh, so this was definitely a challenge. Cats are probably the hardest animal for me to draw. And, and uh, so I spent a lot of time working on this, this guy. But it was a fun project. Why, I, why are they hard to draw? Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Do you is. not like cats? I do. I think it's their face. I think because maybe <clears throat> I didn't grow up with cats and haven't had a lot of cats around. That's probably why. So I, I got three. You want one? I'm just kidding. I'm afraid my dog <laughs> might eat them. Oh, no. They're dog friendly. They're, oh, they have okay. a dog. They have a dog. Oh, they have a dog? Okay. They're like dogs. Anyway, we don't need to talk about my cats. I think you did a good job, but I do think it has to do with how, how much you're around something. You know? I agree. I agree. I'm around elephants a lot more than cats. That's what I figured. I figured you had an elephant. <laughs> I do. Maybe just not a cat. I love that though. Um, okay. So I just want to get a couple questions answered, especially about stifling creativity since I did call it that. But really you gave us like marketing tips. You also gave us humility. But one of the things that I wanted to make sure we covered was you were given some advice, two pieces of advice. One when you were trying to get started, people kept saying, Oh, you got to do this. You got to do this. And you got to be here and you got to do this. And you said, I want to be a good dad. Right. Yeah. I, Can you tell my, them that? Yeah. When I started, you know, you know, you have a lot of different voices in your head, especially when you're younger, you know, and constantly push and pull from all different directions. And my whole thing was my focus is I wanted to be a, I wanted to be first and foremost, an awesome dad growing up without a, a dad in my household consistently, especially. I wanted to be that for my own kids. So that was number one of most importance to me. So I didn't mind stiff arming a bunch of things along the way. And plus I ended up knowing that I had a focus. Once I kind of got to where I wanted to be in my career, once I kind of got over those hurdles, I realized I I, I didn't miss what I was supposed to be doing. Mm. That I was able to just focus and I said, this is where I'm heading. And I'm not going to, I'm going to, and at this point, as old as I am, I realize I, this has got to work. So I'm going to make it work as best I can. And the other, the other advice was actually, I don't know if Tom's still here, but he, had he is, had, he's still here. Okay. He had a, a, a great consultation with Michael Janda that he kind of shared with me some points from that. And one of the, and I think it's really awesome to have somebody from the outside look in and help you kind of make decisions in your own life. And I'm kind of considering doing that as well. But um, one of the things he had asked Tom was, how does your savings look? And when he said that, I knew how my savings looked as far as business. He was talking about business savings because I own my own business. And it was terrible. My business savings was terrible. I had about like $300 in my business savings, but it had been that way for several years. So after he said that and kind of prompted that challenge, I was like, okay, well, what if I put an extra hundred in there? If I hadn't had to touch that for three years, what happens with an extra hundred? And so slowly I started like, well, what if it, what if this, what if I had enough work and this whole job could go into savings? What if I did that? And so over time I was able to kind of build up a little bit of a buffer so that, and what I found and even talking with those, an art director, that it, one day he had put me in for a product project and he was um, asking me how much I would charge. And I said, I have no idea. Well, and he goes, well, the, the good rule of thumb is figure out how much money you need to make in a month and charge that. If it's going to take, take, if it's going to take the month to do it, because when artists are free from worry about all the different things around them, like paying their bills, they're free mm. to create. Mm. And so I realized that having that 
buffer in my savings account for when a client was slow to pay or things got slow or we had a virus that shut us all down. It makes you be able to, to breathe a little bit easier, even though there might be a little bit of pain. It's not near as much. Mm-hmm. And you're able to, to move forward. And when you do get a job, you're able to put your full heart into it and to be creative. And it helps you have your mind free so that you can think how you need to progress without panicking. We have a rule. We have a, a saying in my house, when emotions are high, wisdom is low. I didn't coin that term, but the whole point is when you are freaking out, you're probably not going to make the wisest decision. Hmm. Yeah. So just so you know, doc said um, he needed to hear that about, he's a dad of four girls. So, you know, just, I think that, and we talked about that. And I think that there's a lot of people, I don't have kids, but I feel like anybody who I taught my kid, Alan's my kid. He's here. I didn't birth him except in design, right? He knows not to use papyrus for sure, buddy. (laughs) Right. Uh, But I think that we need to hear that because sometimes we really are pulled. And I think it's really good when you can say no and you start saying no, but your friends, your real friends are going to be proud that you said no Mm -hmm. instead of just being like, Hey man, you're just missing out. Or you're, do you know what I mean? Like it's super important to have your priorities. Uh, and what is success? I know I've asked doc that question. I'm sure you would be success is not always making a ton of money. You guys need to define what success is to you and success for you was coming home, not at 11, but eating dinner with your family and, um, making sure that, uh, you provided, but it was like, um, I know success for you is that you live with this kind of forest behind you. Like that, that is success just mm-hmm. in where you've, where you live and, and how you can live your life and that you have a yard you can mow and have great ideas while you're doing that. Right. 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 And I, and you know, people ask like, what's your d- dream client? And honestly, I think it's anybody that hires me and lets me keep working how I am working, what doing what I'm doing. That's the dream client. Because that's the dream. The dream isn't picture books anymore. The dream is actually being able to do what I'm doing. And a lot of times, I think artists make the picture book or, or whatever it is, like this is the dream, when really it's, the journey is awesome and you learn a lot. But once you get there and you've, you've reached that point, or even if you never do, you realize I have just had a whole career drawing. Hmm. I never knew I could do that. My math mm-hmm. teacher certainly didn't think I could do that. My parents, to be honest with you, didn't think I could do that. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I remember my mom, like she is as sweet as she was and she was never discouraging. But one day she said she couldn't believe it. And I go, what? She goes, I didn't think you were that good. And, and the truth is, if you look back at that first illustration, I think she was right. But, but you know, she never said, don't try it. But it was, uh, so it's been the journey. And um, that's, that's the real dream. So the dream for you is just to continue to make, solve people's problems, client problems, your own, have personal projects. And because you're doing all those things, it looks different. It's not that you're only doing one thing, right? Right, right. And so, but you niche down into children's book. And we didn't get to talk about this. We'll have to do a part two, Rob. I'd love but, to. Because the, the industry changed, right? So kids mm-hmm. want to look cooler, younger, I guess. And so they want to read different kinds of books. And so mm-hmm. it, and we think, oh, the ch- I mean, me, I don't have any kids. I'm like, oh yeah, children's book. That never changes. But you're like, no, it really is the industry changed. And I think that's why we have to have conversations with more people than just the people who are in our, that'll teach us something. People, more than just the people who are in our inner circle, right? We, right. we need to learn about new things. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, Scott says you're Rob McClure can not Rob McClure can't. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I love that. You should uh, coin that yeah. trademark that one, buddy. And Tom, he gave you a great plug. He said, Rob is a, a, a model dad and a great friend. I didn't even oh, know you were cool. a model. No, I'm just kidding. I'm that, not that kind of model, but you can do that too, buddy. That model. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was really anyway, nice. Thank you, Tom. so I want to make sure everybody knows how they can get in touch with you. Um, and let me get to my thing where I have all your links. 
and you can find him if you're listening in i hope that you will go and um it please go watch this one because this one is a great one to see but if you just want to check it out you can get all of these here so c like not a letter but s e e rob draw dot com and then his book is you can go to c rob draw dot com slash books and that where you can get all his books and then um you can follow him on on instagram at r m m c l u r k a n and then at the exact same thing it'll be in the link down below if you are confused because i didn't say it right you can just go on itunes or wherever you're listening or on youtube and you can go but if you an easy way to get there is to rechargingyou.com slash 347, and then all the links will be there too. Awesome. Oh, and uh, Annie says, which we still don't know where Annie's coming from, or I did miss it in the chat, but she says she's been reading um, your <clears throat> blog posts, and she said that they're great. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And Doc says he's been encouraged. So anyway. Cool. Yes, a lot of people. May a lot of people stayed for the whole time. So, oh, she's from England. Oh, thank you, Amy Lyons. I appreciate it. Hey, we pulled pulled in the Brits then. That's awesome. Spain and uh, England. I guess they're Brits. And just to remind everybody, you guys can get this T-shirt. It will be in the link also. uh, And they are one of the sponsors for camp. Just so you know, you can go to camp. You can sign up if you want to sign up now. You can. The website will be continually changing, but really it's about if you need to understand your, how to reach, we talked about this a little bit today. Um, we're always trying to figure out how we can reach that ideal client and those, um, and the people, how we need to, like, why does, why does Annie read, uh, read Rob's or somebody reads Rob's yeah, Annie reads Rob's blog. So that's a client or that's a, a, a somebody who's reading your stuff. Who, how are you reaching these people? And I think we need to know how to do that. And so if you want to spend 25, the whole month of July, I know I'm not finishing a sentence. Ah, I'm so sorry. Meaning that means that if you want to spend July with me and a whole bunch of other people but we're going to do it together. Unless you're a day camper, you're just a lone wolf. You want to go it alone. You just want to watch the videos. That's fine. But Mike Janda is going to be there. Tom Ross. There's going to be Christo. There's going to be some people maybe you don't know, um, but they have gold because gold isn't always on the top of the mountain. It's underneath too. And you have to dig for it just because you don't know who the person is. I've dug, I've found it. It's gold. I want to show you some shiny gold in these people. And they've taught me something and I want them to teach you. We have six countries represented. We have um, just as many women as we do men. I didn't try to do that. It just happened. And my sister is on it too. I didn't just do that. She's just like really smart and she's a marketing person. So she'll help us out. And she tells it like it is. So I always feel a little like, hmm, I kind of just did. She just couldn't find anybody else. She had to get her sister. Like my sister used to work for MTV. She's been an entrepreneur. So it's really for people who are creative entrepreneurs who are trying to really grow their business and, and they, we want to do it together and we want, so there's accountability. There's two live sessions each week. Dave Clayton is going to do a workshop on a Saturday. So one of the live sessions is every Wednesday at 7 PM Eastern time. You guys can do the math um, or not. You can use your phone to do the calculations on the world clock. And then, it, so, and then one is going to be, in the UK, it's going to be at 4 p.m., Annie. Um, but it, for us, it's going to, for Rob, it's going to be at 11 a.m. And so then we're going to break into small groups. We're going to work together. We're going to, there's a Slack channel. I hope you guys want to do it. And the ha- Happy Camper is the one I think I'd do. I mean, you could do the big one if you really want. You get a t shirt, you get some other things. There's some coaching that goes in that one. Sorry to give you a commercial. Rob's like, hey, I got to go to the bathroom. Did you see how much water I was drinking? Holy <laughs> moly, I am. I it was going to be this long, this commercial. <laughs> but um, the, um, so it's three prices. The day camper, you have two months to do it. And there's a work, I'm making a worksheet out of everybody. I've got people that are um, from uh, Gay Hendrix. If you guys don't know who he is, you should look him up. He's written 40 books. He's a clinical psychologist. He's, but he teaches people about getting past some upper limits or limit problems 
which is mindset issues because I think we hold ourselves back. So there's people who are doing mindset work with us. There's people who are doing techie work. We're going to do some SEO work. We're going to do some um, accessibility uh, things with color and your website and making sure you're choosing colors that Google will think is good that will help you get higher in your rankings. But then we're also going to be doing some techniques and tips about strategies, about reaching people and listening and seeing who that audience is and what they want to hear. So what content you need to be making. So I think this is for people who are uh, owners or studio managers are trying to now, and we're doing this together. This is all new and not all new. I mean, it's not all new, but you know what I mean? It's a different kind of new. So anyway, if you want, it's all the, every day in July, we do take the weekends off except on Saturday when we do the little thing together, but we're working five days a week. We have 30 minutes of video and then you're implementing. I'm asking you to implement. So I'm asking you to commit to five hours, five hours a week on your business to grow it in July because it'll be like a, a mini session, but I didn't want to call it boot camp. I didn't want anything painful. I want us to be there together. I really believe in community. So let me tell you about the prices. The day camper is $97. You can find out what all that happens. And then happy camper, good through Sunday. And every day I can't get the site completely finished. You'll just keep getting an extra early bird rate. But right now it is, is 97 for a happy camper. And they get all the community stuff and you get lifetime access. Um, I'm going to actually send you something in the mail, a sticker and a note. I will write it. So there is a limit. I'm not like not thousands of people can't do this camp. It, I do have a limit, but I just want you to know, um, I'd love to have you. It is weird for me to ask. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited. I hope that you think, Oh yeah, maybe I could use that because it's a wide range of things, but it's really focused about reaching your clients, understanding them, um, retaining them, things we could do to make sure that they continue to come back, and then uh, mindset work, so reframing some of our hindry mindsets. So I hope you'll join me at camp. You can check it out at creativesignite.com. It's all normal spelling of everything. The end for me. Rob, you got any last words of wisdom? Thanks for having me on the show. I really enjoyed it, <clears throat> and I appreciate everybody stopping by, and uh, it's been awesome been a lot of fun it's been it's been super awesome thank you so much thank you guys for hanging in there for an hour and a half and just so you know next week d who made this shirt um is going to be on she does talk about niching she does uh loves to do environmentally friendly um things that go with that but she's really going to hone in on uh packaging and how She's gone completely environmental on what she does with her stickers and all kinds of things. So I hope you guys will check it out next week with D Ingles. So anyway, and if you want the shirt, it'll be, the link will be in there. Hopefully they put the link in the chat again, but doesn't look like it. Uh, package design, uh, D says. So yes, and she is an idea machine. Thank you guys. And check out the um, Creatives Ignite and check out C Rob. Draw, draw, draw. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys.